What's up guys, this is a video that was one of the first I was going to do on a documentary series where the theme was that of forgotten fighters. Boxers who, for whatever reason, had been either forgotten by history or fighters that we know very little about. Now, whether Michael Jokes belongs on a list like this is debatable, as most hardcore fans from the 1980s know about him, uh, but I think a lot of fans may have forgotten how good he could have been. So stay tuned for a look back at Michael Dynamite Dokes. every day uh, if you want to look at it like that but uh, I don't see nothing that I haven't done uh, what drink Cristel I, I used to drink 10 bottles a night uh, uh, Lafitte uh, uh, 1966 uh, 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 blow I used to do ounces uh, quarter ounces uh, parties I used to throw the biggest bass uh, the great Gatsby didn't have parties as good as I had uh, uh, women, uh, I've been through them, um, uh, actresses, uh, models, uh, uh, call girls, <laughs> you know, uh, 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 you know, it's, it's what, a Rolls Royce, uh, I had them, uh, houses, I had them, uh, uh, I, you know, it's just uh, uh, no, nothing that I haven't tapped, you know what I'm saying? When boxing experts discuss who had the fastest hands in heavyweight history, the name of Michael Dokes usually is among those first mentioned. He started his boxing career at the age of 12 and within five years became one of the most accomplished amateurs in the country. He traveled to tournaments to fight alongside future Olympians such as Leon Spinks and Sugar Ray Leonard. One of the highlights of his amateur career would include this AAU title winning effort against Woody Clark and a defeat of fellow prospect Greg Page and John Tate. Turning pro in 1976 at the age of 18, Dokes would be featured on ABC's Wide World of Sports against Muhammad Ali in an exhibition match. Ali clowned and showboated throughout, but viewers couldn't help but notice the fast hands of his determined foil. Dokes would win 15 fights in a row before taking on the once formidable Jimmy Young. Young was 15 pounds over his best fighting weight and was outpointed by the younger, hungrier Dokes. But signs of Dokes' own lack of discipline would be apparent in a disputed draw against the much smaller Ozzy Ocasio. Dokes would avenge the poor showing two months later by smashing the future cruiserweight titleist in one round. I've become uh, more mature mentally as well as physically and uh, dealing with a lot of situations and circumstances. Uh, boxing has made me very patient and uh, just waiting my time and with patience you get it all. By 1981, Dokes was considered to be the heir apparent to Larry Holmes's heavyweight crown alongside Greg Page and Jerry Cooney. He took risks his fellow prospects didn't, taking on the dangerous Randall Tex Cobb in a nationally televised bout. So uh, I think it's a day of judgment, uh, not for myself because I don't need you no know, self-approval. I'm, I'm convinced, I'm confident, I'm cocky, I'm whatever uh, the people want to say. Uh, but I think it's a day of judgment for the people to, to analyze me, uh, and to make their deduction on their conclusions and, and say, well, hey, this guy can fight. Dokes would outpoint Cobb in a rugged battle in his next bout, Dokes would put on his most impressive showing to date, and perhaps his career, 
when his firepower took out the tough John L. Gardner of Britain. Oh, beautiful combination, setting him up with two left hooks, a right, a left, a right, left again. Remember, Gardner has never been stopped, but he is down. Now angling for a title shot, Dokes stayed busy, fighting another spoiler opponent in George Chaplin, and in his HBO debut, he made a favorable impression with the first round stoppage of Lynn Ball. And a right hand drops Ball, and I mean drops him right now. Do not call that a knockdown, I call that a slip. And now, That's once again, that one is a knockdown. First one looked very much like a knockdown to me. Well, that was Ball, ball missed a wild left hook and got hit with a right hand the first time. So pretty good left hand of the stomach that time as we have about 10 seconds left and a right hand right on the button. You found a punch from someplace. You're knocking everybody out. What's happened? Well, I wish you wouldn't disclose that information right now, uh, doctor. And uh, as far as my punching is concerned, I, I really have no logical answer for it. Just uh, maturity and uh, confidence and uh, uh, cultivating my twos and uh, along with everything else is probably... Uh, a, a great cause of it all. I'm defending my North American belt, which is uh, very significant in my career right now, and I have to be up for these type of fights, and, uh, you know, I, I'm, I took it. In other words, you don't take any of these fighters cheap. Oh, you can't, because at this position I'm, I'm in, at number two in the world, number three in uh, the other division, uh, you can't afford to take anybody lightly because I end up at the bottom of the barrel again trying to fight back to the top and uh, it's, it's just nonsense to, to jeopardize myself like that. And he put his hand right up there. He didn't like to get hit there. Oh, Thomas says he's all right. Dokes anxious to spring out of the corner. Here he comes. I couldn't spar for 10 days. I couldn't turn down King down. The man has did wonders for me. And also, my manager called King. He said, go ahead. Take the fight. All right. And also for NBC, Miss King, my mother, you, Lillian, I love you all. You were my first fight on NBC. And you, exactly. You Two did years ago, January. You did it then, and you did it this time. Well, Freddie, what do you think? Do huh? you think I improved any? You sure have. Me, I'm a little humble guy, and I really don't want to. <laughs> Humble is nowhere in the building with you. <laughs> Humble I haven't seen in the building with you or this man, Don King, here. Well, Where are you going with this guy? This guy's going for a championship. championship. It's nothing to stop him. I think Dynamite Dokes has improved. He's a tremendous competitor. He's a great fighter, and I think that we owe a great debt of indebtedness to you because you are the man that's really taking over television boxing, Dr. Bernie Pacheco, and we love you. Lighten up, lighten up. <laughs> let, well, let, man, let, let me say, I, I'm saying, where did you find the punch? Please just tell me that. I want to go get some. We you know, it down, Mike. It, it's, it's something that's, that's been... Right with me for a long time, Freddie. I come out the amateur with an outstanding knockout record, and then I came into the pros. I had to cultivate my talent, my tools, get my balance together, talk with Bobby Lewis, 
Bill present. They cultivated my style. Now I'm older. I'm 23. I weigh. I'm a full-fledged heavyweight now. And so now it's just all falling together. It was nothing like it was never there because my speed and agility is my best asset. I'm still not a puncher, Fred. I look I'm for you. I'm still not a puncher. I'm Fred a <laughs> Weaver. I'm a Fred of home. Tony, you swear to God, I'm Fred of you. <laughs> well, we're ready to see you in heavyweight championship action this coming year because I don't think they can hold you I back. I hope it's back on the eight. This nationally televised knockout of journeyman Franco Thomas would be Dokes' final tune-up before he would take a crack at Mike Weaver's WBA heavyweight title. Weaver was a physically powerful fighter with a Herculean physique, but he had been an active champion and had a bad habit of starting slow in his fights. This strategic weakness would play right into the hands of Dokes, who had perfected the art of the first round blitz. And he's a boxer and that he's been in the ring since he's a youngster. Very late to boxing. And the pace starts very quickly, and that is what we expected. I know it's what you expected, right? Good shot by Weaver. I was not surprised at all, Brad, because I figured those should come out fast because Weaver here is cold. No preparation. At the age of 24, Michael Dynamite Dokes had become the heavyweight champion of the world. But the early stoppage by referee Joey Curtis cast a shadow over Dokes' victory. Fans and commentators alike were suspicious of Don King pulling the strings and protested that the fix was in. A rematch was ordered and a controversy of a different kind would emerge. This go-around, Weaver would weather Dokes' early round barrage and take Dokes into the championship rounds. He would outwork the new champion, and the bout was declared a draw. But many ringsiders believed Weaver had regained his belt by one or two points. Winning the title seemed to propel Dokes into a downward spiral. He gained weight and trained only intermittently. Then his legal troubles began to mount, and he was arrested for driving recklessly and for impersonating a Dokes would later admit that he trained for the fight snorting cocaine and drinking Jack Daniels. His career 
looked to go into a free fall as he struggled against journeyman Mike Jameson and his old foe, Randall Tex Cobb. His career in life looked to be in shambles, as he would be arrested for cocaine possession and charged with resisting arrest. Sent to prison, Dokes would stay out of the ring for almost three years until he came back in December of 1987. The road back was hard as Dokes gained a considerable amount of weight and looked unrecognizable from the muscular athlete he was only a few years earlier. But failure now, a loss now, might set you back even farther, might maybe end your career. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not even pessimistic about it. Though. At this point, I can't see losing because I'm in better shape than I ever was in my career. Uh, I, I'm, I'm more uh, stable in my life uh, than I ever was now. And as far as my ability is concerned, I feel better about about my progress and my tools than I ever did before. Uh, I have a defense now, which I never had before. I, I used to work on just reflexes. Uh, uh, my power is there now, which uh, I felt uh, I had before, but it's basically speed. So uh, with those two, I just uh, losing never in my mind. What message do you have for fans who watch you and remember you as the heavyweight champion? Be patient. Time will come again. I'll see a pair. Good and bad. Uh, I'll have my chance again. Dokes' words would prove to be prophetic as he would go on a five-fight win streak and work himself into shape. There was talk of him fighting Mike Tyson, but his management team opted for another opponent, Evander Holyfield. It was a fight that few experts gave Dokes a chance at winning. Past his prime and counted out, Dokes would give the best performance of his career. Dokes has opened up differently this round, going to the head, building up an early lead. And punch after punch rains on Holyfield without an answer.
Stokes became a victor in losing the fight with Holyfield. He regained the respect he had lost from fans with his valiant effort and continued to speak on his ongoing battle with drug addiction. It was pretty bad. Uh, it was a matter uh, of uh, either change or die. Uh, it was to that extent. Uh, my usage was pretty uh, severe. Uh, ounces. Uh, I was buying kilos at a time and uh, uh, staying up for maybe six, seven days straight. Uh, uh, I had went from like uh, 240 pounds down to about 190. Uh, uh, my habits had changed, my eating habits, uh, uh, and I had lost control of my life. He's fearless. He knows no fear. He always possessed a tremendous amount of natural ability. Fast hands, fast moving legs, fairly good puncher, always took a good punch. The public itself uh, respects me more now than even when I was champion of the world. And, and that means more and have, carries a lot more value to me than, than fighting for the title. Dokes was now a spent bullet. He returned to fighting journeymen and waited to see if he could score one more big fight. I'm not fighting for money uh, this time. Uh, uh, money is fine. Uh, don't get me wrong. Miss, uh, the money is not, not the most important thing, but there's nothing more important. Uh, don't get me wrong, but, but you know, once you attain the money, you lose your incentive. You become lackadaisical. Uh, you become, become content. I'm fighting for self-esteem, respect now, uh, my integrity. Uh, these things last long after money. Uh, uh, George Washington is dead, but he's on the dollar bill uh, because he had the respect and, 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 and the integrity uh, to live long after his death. And uh, these are the things that, that I'm working towards now. Uh, I just don't think I could do it for the money this time. Razor Ruddick was the newest power-punching heavyweight on the scene. Doak started well in the bout, but in the end, he would be little more than a notch in the younger fighter's belt. Oh, good counter right by Dokes. Right now, Ruddick is fighting the wrong fight, not using his legs at all. Like most fighters, Dokes continued to box because he knew little else. His restaurant businesses had failed and he had little else to fall back on. Eighteen months after the Ruddick defeat, Dokes was back in the ring, once again taking on journeymen for little pay in small Las Vegas casinos. He reeled off ten consecutive wins, all against nondescript opposition, when he was led like a lamb to the slaughter against the new heavyweight champion, Riddick Bowe. Missing with the big right hand. Dope. And down goes Dope. Dope into the ropes. Well, I don't think Dokes went all the way down, but the referee wants to give him what will amount to the first standing eight count. That was a very, very fast call. It was Dope who decided to go out there and fight early like that, though. Wasn't Bo's idea. Short left hand inside by Bo. More than a minute to go in the round. Plenty of time for Bo to close it out. If he can keep Dokes in trouble, Dokes lands another left hook.